What's up everyone? Welcome to another video. Now in this video, I will show you what is N8N memory and how you can use it within your own AI agents when you're creating those AI agents in N8N. I will also show you how chat memory works. So it's very simple. So let's build one simple AI agent here. So we will trigger it manually, which means that when we click test workflow, it will be triggered manually. And then we have an advanced AI here, and we can see that we have an AI agent here. Now, obviously we can also use open AI, we can use basic LLM chain, but in order for the memory to be uh, working correctly, we actually need to use AI agent. Uh, and I will show you right now. So as you can see, uh, first we need to set up an AI agent now, what I like to do is I like to have a, a tools agent depending on what you want to do, right? So for example, tools agent is usually utilized structured tool for precise and reliable tool selection and execution. So this is recommended for like complex tasks and stuff like that. Conversational agent is also good for this uh, example that we're going to uh, be giving. Uh, now, as you can see, the prompt is going to be JSON chat input prompt. And obviously we can also have a system message here. We can also add a prompt, right? Assistant right here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this and I'm just going to, uh, so this is how it looks like right now. We can also open chat here and chat with, a, uh, uh, with this particular agent. So we don't, I don't think we actually need this for now. Yeah. Uh, and chat model can be, so what I like to use is I like to use open router chat model. And I actually have an open router API key. You can go to open router and you can find pretty much any free API keys here. So you just click on the uh, API here and you can create an API key here, right? Uh, for example, for DeepSeq 0, R10. And then as you can see, you just simply go here and you want to paste that API key. From there, as you can see, I can go and I can pretty much choose any model here. So as you can see, if I go with free, I can choose all these free models, which is really great. So let's say DeepSeq chat. This is a free model. I can use that. And what I can do here is obviously, as you can see, I can also make sure that I have some like response format um, or like frequency penalty, but we don't need that for now. So right now we have the open router chat model. And right now we can go in AI uh, here in chat. And what we can do is we can have a system message here. And as you can see, this is a system message. So what I will do is I will say, act like, so this is like a prompt, right? Act like a um, recommendation assistant for best restaurants in Europe. So obviously the prompt can be much, you know, uh, much wider than this and much more detailed. And then memory, this is where the memory comes in, right? So as you can see, you have a couple of different types of memories. You have window buffer memory. This is the easiest one to set up and this is by far the best one to use personally. Um, so this stores uh, memory in N8N, so there are no credentials needed. However, if you wanna use other third-party tools, you can use, for example, if I wanna use Motorhead here, as you can see, I'll actually need credentials. So I actually need the API key and the client ID, right? And Motorhead, Motorhead, not that Motorhead, but Motorhead memory. As you can see, this is basically where you can find, you know, Motorhead memory. And then you can go and you can, you know, generate the API key and you can put it here and client ID here. Same goes for any other memory other than um, the memory we just said. So let's go again. So for example, Postgres chat memory, this is very uh, popular one. Uh, as you can see, um, again, you need credential for this. You would need API key, password, or actually not API key, but just password. And then that's pretty much it, right? You can connect it. So that's how you can connect the memory. But memory is basically used to store, right? I usually use this one, but memory is basically used to store the brain of the conversation. So when we are talking about um, session ID here, so we can obviously define below the session ID, connected chat trigger node that can be also session ID. So if you want to define below, you, you can basically use an expression to reference data in previous nodes or enter like static text. 
but I like to keep it like this. And then context window length is basically how many past interactions will this memory save. So if I type in five different sentences and I hit enter after each, right? So I have one, two, three, four, five, then context window will actually go and save those five. After those five, it will not be saved. So you can actually put 10, you can put five, you can put six. So how does that works is you go and you open a chat here and you say hello. And as you can see, the AI agent will actually re reply based on the open router chat model that we have here. As you can see, hello, if you're looking for the best restaurants in Europe, I can help you with that. Could you specify a particular country or cuisine you're interested in? Hey, so for example, right now, since the prompt is only made for finding best restaurants in Europe, what I can do is I can say, hey, my name is Tin, for example. Hey, my name is Tin. Nice to meet you. You can call me Tin from now and find me the best restaurant in Poland, in Prague. And as you can see now, the AI chat or AI agent will say my name as Tin, right? And as you can see, nice to meet you, Tin. It seems that there might be a small, a small confusion. Prague is the capital of Czech. Okay, so actually, <laughs> my bad here. Uh, Czech Republic, not Poland, for the best restaurants in Prague. I recommend La Degustation Bohem Burkwas, known for its exquisite. Okay, what's my name again? So yeah, I kind of, I'm not that good at geography. Okay, your name is Tin. So as you can see, and once you have the memory, memory or window buffer memory is, as you can see here, it's, it's, it's saved already two conversations. And, you know, we can go on and on and on. And uh, yeah, we can basically use that to, to save the conversations and store those conversations. So this is how it looks like. And this is how it works. It, the memory is really, really easy way to actually go and create really smart AI conversational agents. Uh, now, obviously, you know, you can also add tools here, but these tools are more so for like coding or like HTTP request tools and stuff like that. Um, or you can add like other other tools right here, like, you know, uh, Airtable Air even, uh, Asana, stuff like that. You can even like save these conversations into like Google Sheet or Google Docs if you want or something like that. But yeah, that's pretty much it, right? That's how you can use N8N memory and how chat memory works in N8N. So obviously, as I said, you can also go and you can add multiple different other memories, but for that you will need an API key. So if you want more like an extensive approach and um, for N8N memory, and if you wanna know more, definitely check out our channel and yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you guys for watching.